Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem solve more problems from code shift status 78. Uh, this I think is not a tough problem. It just is a slight deviation from the standard binary search. So the description is a bit long. I'll not be going through the description, but yeah, the gist of the question is that they'll be providing it with, uh, with two arrays. That is the array A and array B. And they'll be providing it with two integers N and K. N is the size of these two arrays. So N is the size of array A and array B. The K is the amount of time you actually have, right? And what these arrays represent is, so uh, AI or the array A represents the value of the time or the amount of time you require to solve a particular problem I and B is the amount of the rest you require after solving the particular problem I. Cool. Also, when uh, so you are supposed to solve as many problems or as many tasks as possible. So after you solve a problem, you need that uh, amount of rest equal to bi however when you will be solving the last problem right after that whatever rest is required the, that won't be counted so for example let's say this is the first problem i solved then this was the second problem i solved and this was the third problem i solved so when i solved the third problem after that i required a rest of two units but i'll not be counting that so i'll be i'll only be counting the, uh, the summation of 1 2 4 plus uh, 5 uh, 83 plus 10 and then 23 so 2 won't be counted i hope that makes it clear so let's get started with the solution itself it's i'll just uh, share the intuition i mean so we are given with two arrays so one is let's say a so a has a naught b naught sorry a naught a1 a2 a3 a4 so on to a n or a n minus one then b naught b1 b2 b3 b4 now let's assume that it was not the case that uh, we were told that the last uh, last process or last task or last problem we are going to do, we need not take the BI break after it, right? In that case of a scenario, what you could, could have done is that you could have taken uh, the summation of this particular thing, right? So you would have said that A0 plus B0, so this would be one element, A1 plus B1 would be second element. A2 plus B2, so on to AN minus 1 plus BN minus 1. Then you would have sorted it, right? Because you want to, uh, since you want to maximize the number of tasks, so you greedily want to select the tasks that are taking the minimum time. So then you would have sorted it, right? And then you could have easily told that, okay, so let's say uh, when you sorted it, you got something like uh, 3, 5, 8, 7, oh, sorry, 9 maybe. Right, these are sorted values. So one way of doing it would have been that you could have taken the prefix sum. When you take the prefix sum, you will get the value 3, 8, 16. And since this is 9, this will become 25. Now I'll say that, uh, okay, fetch me that, uh, fetch me how many tasks you can do if you have a time of, let's say, 10 units, right? So a standard way of doing it would be that you will find the small, uh, like the largest value that is smaller than 10. So the largest value that is smaller than 10 over here is 8. So you'll say, okay, these two tasks can be done. Uh, the way the code verse works is actually you'll find the upper bound of 10. So upper bound of 10 would land you over here. You'll select the previous element. That's how the things work. If I was not saying that uh, you need to exclude the uh, the wait time or the rest time of the last task possible, right? So cool. This is actually easily done in log n time, right? The building of the prefix sum or the sum or sorting etc. takes n log n time, obviously, right? However, finding what uh, for a given time, finding how many tasks you can do takes a log n time because this is based on binary search. So upper bound operation that we're going to use over here is based on, okay, upper bound, pardon me for my writing, is based on binary search, right? This takes log n time. Cool. So now what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say that, okay, I want to see that what happens or how many tasks can I do if I say that the ith task is the last time I'm going to perform, right? So the last task could be anything. So it could be any, uh, any task from zero to n, right? So this is the last task I'm going to perform. Okay. So if this is the, if this is the last task, then I'll definitely need some or I'll need to uh, need the time for it. So the time or the required time for it would be stored in A of I only, right? Then I'll say that find me how many tasks you can perform. 
now this becomes tricky right because we are already excluding one task now if i try to make that prefix vector all over again then it's going to take me another n log n time the entire complexity is going to become n square log n then that would lead to a tle we need at max we can go for n log n time complexity over here so what i'm going to do is that i'll say that okay let's work with the same prefix uh, array we already had right so i'll say that the array we're already having that was uh, 3 8 16 25 Three, eight, sixteen, twenty-five. Let's just work with that. I'll say cool enough. Now let's do one more thing. So let's say, let's just take the entire example. Now let's say when you were uh, building this up, so your a not b not values were some uh, like the array you got after adding a not b not a one b one and so uh, so on so forth was something like five, eight, six, nine. So this was the index zero, one, two, three. When you sorted it, so you just need to save the index also. So zeroth index came over here. Three was belonging to okay. Three five eight nine. Okay, I messed that up. It had to be three. Cool. So this was the second index. Then you had eight, and then you had nine at three. Cool. So the index was also shuffled. Cool. Now what I'm saying is that. I'll be using the sa same array that was three five eight nine. The array which was uh, which I was having, let's call it B. It was three five eight nine, and the indices were um two zero one three. So let's write the indices also two zero one three. Now I'll say that I uh, want you to select the zeroth index. Cool enough. I'll say that okay. I'm selecting this particular term now. When I'm saying index over here, I'm mentioning the index or the original indexes of V itself. So I'll say I'll be using this. Uh, I'll be using the uh, this particular task as the last task. I'll say cool enough. Now, how much time do I require if I want to use this as the last task? Now, for the last task, you only need the AI value. So AI can actually be found because it also contains the indices or the original indices. So A of whatever value it already had. So let's say this is two, right? So a of two, whatever value was there in a of two. Now what was the value there in a of two? Okay, so this was the value of v of two. Let's say a for this was two and b for this was one. Let's just assume that, right? So I'll get okay. So a of i value was two. I'll store that required is equal to two over here. Then I'll say find. Now what I should find? Now I should find the number of tasks which I am able to perform in what many time. So I already consumed two two units of time in order to process the last task. So the time left with me would be k minus two, or k minus required to generalize. Let me raise things a bit. It's getting messy. Okay. Cool. So in k minus two, how many tasks I can perform? Now what? Area or a vector I'll be using, so I'll be using the prism vector that I already already computed uh, computed over here. I'll be using this. That okay? Tell me how many tasks can I perform if I have this many much time required? Now this will say that okay, you are gonna perform. Let's say the, you can perform the first two tasks in this time limit, right? Then I'll say that okay, two tasks I can perform now. But wait, is is this the case wherein the task I was already talking about or this particular task? Right, is it present in the first two tasks? If that is the case, then then I've already calculated the time for it, right? In required itself, and since it's the it's the last task, I don't need the bi for it. But in the pre sum, I was using ai plus bi, which I don't need for the last task, right? So I'll be subtracting that value. So subtract that from required time. Else, if that is not the case, then the thing would be that this is the vector that Prism gave you, and this was the value that you were selecting at the last, right? So you were saying that okay, this is the uh, two tasks I'm gonna do or problems I'm gonna solve, and this is the last problem problem I'm gonna solve. In that case, you also have to take uh, like take into consideration that this is also a task, so you have to update your answer accordingly. So that is one thing that you need to know that whether the task. Uh, or the last task is already present in this sub array or not now if it was present in this sub array and you already subtracted the value then in that case it is possible that your required 
now decreases to such a value that even the next task can be accommodated right so that also needs to be checked it's better let, let's just look at the code the code is fairly simple for this i hope that you are able to understand from the code itself let me try to zoom it a bit cool so in the code itself what i'm doing is this firstly i'm taking the two vectors a and b right after i have the vectors i'm storing it in another vector that is v right the only thing is that v also contains uh, actually contains a pair because of a pair i can store the value and the indices as well so i'm storing the values of a ai plus bi and the index i then i'm going to sort it because i want the smallest time consuming pr problem to be at the first right then i'm going to initialize a piece some vector this is pretty standard stuff how uh, like st pretty standard stuff how to uh, calculate the piece some vector and etc i'm not discussing that then i'll say that let uh, this i be the process that i want to solve at the last right or it uh, let i be the problem i want to solve at the last so the time required for solving this process would be the a or whatever index it is having so the indices are stored in the second location so over here you can see that the indices are stored in the second location so whatever time it requires would be stored in required now now if the time required is already greater than k then i definitely can't do this task itself so there's no point continuing further hence i'll uh, like break the loop over here or not break it but yeah i'll uh, not uh, go into further details i'll just uh, go for the second iteration then i'll say if that is not the case right then my result at least can be one that is obvious right then i'll say what are the number of tasks or number of problems that you can solve so for that i'm using upper bound operation over here right the reason i'm getting an integer value is because i'm subtracting the first iterator of the prism vector when i subtract the first iterator of the prism vector what would happen is that it will give me the indexes or it will give me the first index which is which is having a greater value right now if index is 0 since i'm all, uh, getting a greater value i have to subtract one from here itself right so if index is already 0 i cannot subtract one because i cannot go to a negative index so i can uh, continue from there itself else if that is not the case i can write a else but doesn't changes the fact cool okay so i do x okay then i'm saying whatever like time was required let me add that to the required time so the time required to solve this idx task is actually given by the prism vector then i'm saying that is it possible that the current task which was was talking to be the last task if it was already present is it's present in the particular vector which i'm calculated which i've calculated using prism then in this case i've already calculated that particular task twice right so if that's the case let's subtract the value of ai plus bi for that task for the last task if that's not the case then the task is residing somewhere else right so in that case i'll have to increment my idx now the only reason to increment my idx or the index variable over here is because i'm using the index variable to know the number of tasks i can perform cool after that i'm saying that if uh, the index is not already pointing to the last index right or the index variable is not already pointing to the last and if it's possible for me to include the the, the next uh, next problem itself right or the problem just to my right then i also do that now why uh, why is this the case we already applied a upper bound right why, how can this be the case because we have already subtracted this particular value right so a case might arise wherein it's possible for you to you know add the next task so if that's the case go ahead and do it cool after that i am saying that uh, result is maximum of result or idx plus 1 now the reason of doing a plus 1 over here is because we are having a zero base indexing so even if we are saying that i can do processes till uh, the ith index or the first index then i actually mean i can do the two processes 0 and 1 so that's why i'm adding one over here then i'll just print the result cool that's it for the video i hope you like the solution and the way the intuition works and uh, binary search is actually used at a lot of locations so this tiny uh, p bits and practicing such things that how can you use binary search even when an element is missing or you have already removed something is actually pretty handy when it comes to cp so if you still have any doubts let me know in the comment section below thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye